Tidwell, one of the evangelists for the Church of Christ at 1130 Fishinger Road. Thank you for joining me for this class, The Power of a Positive Perspective. As we continue our study, this week we're looking at the choice we make to have a perspective of love as opposed to a perspective of hate. Thank you again for joining us with this study. I hope that you find it beneficial. As we continue our study on the power of a positive perspective, we will continue to unfold what it means to have a perspective of faith. When we think about faith, we must realize that faith ultimately is a choice. Choosing to believe what God has told you. And not only is faith a choice, but also the attitudes that flow from faith are also a choice. We'll be looking at each of these attitudes aspects of the fruit of the Spirit, and seeing the way in which we choose to embrace this attitude and to let it shape our perspective. We'll be looking in turn at love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Each of these aspects of the Spirit's fruit in our lives are evidence that we are in step with the Spirit because this is what it means to have a perspective of faith, an outlook informed and directed by the good news of Jesus Christ. In Galatians 5.25 we read, If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. If you have become a Christian through faith in Jesus Christ, that same faith which provided for you the Holy Spirit in the waters of baptism, will give you access to the Spirit's power in your life as He directs and guides you day by day. We need to keep in step with the Spirit. That is to say, to cultivate that choice, the choice of faith, the choice of each aspect that that faith unfolds as the Spirit's fruit is in our lives. A perspective of love should permeate our outlook. This is a choice. We choose to love. Not that we happen to feel that it's convenient, but we have made an act of will, a choice, a decision. When we think about love, of course, we think of 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Picking up in verse 4, we read various aspects of love, and this helps us to see how our perspective should be changed when we choose love instead of hate. Paul says in this perspective of love that love is patient. We live in an age of immediate gratification and we live in an age of aggrievement where people are prone to fly off the handle. In contrast to that, Christians are called to choose to be patient. Proverbs 10:12 Hatred stirs up strife but love covers all offenses. Certainly, people have done things to offend you. The question is, do you choose to stir up strife? Do you choose the way of hatred? Or in love, do you seek to mitigate, to reduce, to cover the offense? As Christians, walking in step with the Spirit, we should choose the way of peace, the way of patience, not the way of anger and resentment. Paul goes on to say that love is kind. Kindness is something in very short supply in our world. But kindness is central to keeping in step with the Spirit. And we should be kind because God has been kind to us. And if we remember that, we are able to be kind to others. Ephesians 4.32, be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. Yes, people have done things that are hurtful to us, but we have done things that have been hurtful to God. And God in his kindness has forgiven us. So it is we should cultivate a mindset of forgiveness towards others. A perspective of faith, keeping in step with the Spirit, will have a perspective of loving kindness. And also, 
not of envy or boastfulness. Envy and boastfulness are two sides of the same coin. When I envy someone, I resent the good that he has. And when I'm boastful, I am elevating myself in a way that puts other people down. We must not do this, but rather we should choose a different outlook. Matthew 27, 18 gives an example of envy. Pontius Pilate knew of the Jews, that they were envious. For he knew that it was out of envy that they had delivered him up. Why is it that the Jews delivered Jesus to Pontius Pilate? It's because the Jewish leaders were envious of Jesus. It's not because of any of the trumped-up charges that they brought accusing him of blasphemy, accusing, accusing him of insurrection. Pontius Pilate saw through that and knew it was out of envy. We need to make sure that we do not permit envy to take over our lives, that we, like the Jewish leaders, would fall into sin because of envy. We need to make a choice of humility, not of boastfulness. In a similar way, love is not arrogant or rude, and in many ways, arrogance and rudeness are the practical outflowing of envy and boastfulness. Whenever we are arrogant, whenever we look at other people and put them down, we have made a choice that is not in step with the Spirit. Isaiah 3 verse 5 describes the dissolution of Jewish society, the way in which the nation was falling apart. The prophet says, And the people will oppress one another, every one his fellow and every one his neighbor. The youth will be insolent to the elder and the despised to the honorable. I think about the recent hashtag that has been used where those who are younger say to those who are older, Okay, boomer. In other words, dismissing someone who is older just simply on that basis, that they are not part of your generation. The youth being insolent to the elder, the despised to the honorable, in place of that, we need civility. Not being rude and arrogant, but embracing love. And this is a choice we must make if we want our attitude to be guided by the Spirit. Further, love does not insist on its own way. We have a, a mindset, it's my way or the highway. But we must not be constantly looking at what we want, but rather we should look at what is good for everyone. Philippians 2, beginning in verse 3, Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interest, but also to the interest of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. Make a decision. Change your mind. Instead of being controlled by an agenda of self, think of others. Think of what is best for all. And the one who gives us the example of how to do this is Jesus Christ himself. Love does not seek its own way and is not irritable or resentful. Again, we have entered into a time where aggrievement seems to be the order of the day. To be irritated, to be resentful of others. But love is a choice that says, I will not be irritable. I will not be resentful. We need to do this because of the way in which Christ has forgiven us. James 1, 19, Know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. Slow to speak and slow to anger. Rather than flying off the handle, rather than cultivating and stoking up anger, we should strive for forgiveness and patience. Love does not rejoice at wrongdoing. And looking at this, we see two different ideas. First of all, love doesn't appreciate that which is wrong. 
The Apostle Paul in Romans 1.32 describes the uh, downward spiral of society in this way. Though they know God's righteous decree that those who practice such things deserve to die, they not only do them but give approval to those who practice them. Approving of sin is not love. Approving of sin is not an aspect of love. Love does not rejoice at wrong. Now, in looking at this, we see also that it's possible to rejoice at wrong in putting other people down. The idea of rejoicing when you find someone else's sin in order to build yourself up in arrogance. Love finds no joy in any wrong, but rather, love rejoices with the truth truth matters. It's not enough that someone feels a certain way. Their feelings should be in alignment with the truth. And when someone is misguided, mistaken, when they have embraced a lie, the loving thing is to help them out of that lie, not to foster it and encourage it. You think in terms of a young person who has an eating disorder who imagines themselves to be overweight, even though they are really quite underweight. The loving thing is to disabuse them of that error and to help them to see the truth, not to foster it. The same thing is true with the gender confusion that has become such a prominent aspect in our society. It is not loving to encourage people in the lie that a biological male can become a female. We should rejoice with the truth and to help others to see the truth. Encouraging a lie is never a loving thing to do. We need to make the sometimes hard choice to rejoice in the truth. 3 John 1.3 For I rejoice greatly when the brothers came and testified to your truth, as indeed you are walking in the truth. To keep in step with the Spirit is to walk in the truth. Love bears all things. Again, we have a mindset of aggrievement that has gripped our country. And the idea of being angry and saying, I'm not going to put up with, and fill in the blank. Love bears all things. Romans 15.1 We who are strong have an obligation to bear with the failings of the weak and not to please ourselves. Bear with the failings of the weak. Again, we don't leave people in error. We encourage them in the truth but we need to be patient and to make sure our outlook is a choice of love and compassion, not of anger and resentment. Love believes all things. Now, this certainly does not mean that we are to be gullible. It's good that Paul has already said that love rejoices in the truth. So rejoicing in the truth does not mean that you simply believe anything someone tells you, but you believe in the possibilities God can unfold. You believe in the grace of God that can be greater than the problems that people face. And you believe that what God has said is true. Psalm 119.66, Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I believe in your commandments. God has spoken. Do you believe? Do you believe all things that he has told you? For this is a choice that comes out of love. Love bears all things. Love believes all things. Love hopes all things. Our congregation has followed a series of sermons on Sunday morning and Sunday evening with the Summer of Hope. Hope is not just wishful thinking. It is the confident assertion that everything God has promised will come to pass because He is almighty. 
He's all loving. And He is able to bless us as He has said He will. It is a choice of love to hope all things. Romans 8.24 For in this hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what he sees? We walk by faith, not by sight. We do not have all of the blessings that God has promised yet, but we have received them in faith, and we hope all things. We have assurance that God is at work in all of our lives. He has a plan for your life, and in hope you can see this unfold. Love endures all things. Just putting one foot in front of the other is a challenge some days. Just simply moving forward. But in the face of great adversity, as all Christians have in this world, love provides endurance. And again, it's a choice. You choose to keep going out of love. Not for yourself, primarily. But you keep going because of your love for God and your love for others. You don't give up. Because if you give up, other people will suffer. But if you persevere, you will be in a position to help them along. James 1.12 We will receive the crown of life which God has promised to those who love him. We will receive the crown of life. We recognize that if we endure, we receive this blessing. There is a need for a positive perspective because there is a reality of bad things. We cannot ignore sin. We cannot ignore conflict. We cannot ignore the uncertainties of day-to-day -day living. But in the face of this, we can make a choice to have a positive perspective. Our lives flow downstream from our convictions. If you change your thinking, you will change your life. As we keep in step with the Spirit, let's make the choice to follow the way of love and to bring this into our lives so that we can share the love of God in Jesus Christ with others. Thank you for joining us for this class. I hope you found it beneficial and look forward to having you with us next week as we continue our unpacking of an attitude directed by faith in step with the Spirit and we consider the choice of having joy. I hope you have a blessed week. Oh.